Well, today for the Heritage Trust, we've got um, Graham Bain with us, so it's nice to see you back. Very nice to see you, Christine. Nice to be back. Um, when you came along to Dunfermline, it was uh, at the time where things hadn't gone too well for us, and Jim McIntyre had um, taken over from Stephen Kenny, and you signed. Uh, you were signed by Jim in 2008. Eight. Yep. So, what made you come to Dunfermline? Because you were playing with Inverness. Playing with Inverness, yeah. Uh, the season previous to that, I had been playing. I had played in every game in the, the Premier League, and as much as I got on really well, Craig Brewster, when he came back as manager again, I wasn't find myself not playing as much. Mm -hmm. um, I still had a year of my contract left to go. Um, I had spoke to Craig just about things, and he said that it was maybe he wasn't really keen on me to go. But he had, had his eye on Andy Bar Barman as well to sign, so I said, well, if that sort of came to fruition, then would I be free? And he said, let me work on a few things, and it seemed to take forever, if I remember that somebody, Andy Barman seemed to be stalling forever, and that was kind of the, <laughs> the cost I'd get to, to go if he, if he came in. And eventually it happened, I um, got permission to speak to both Dunferman and St Johnson, I met them both. In the same day, I think, if I remember rightly, I met Derek McInnes and I met Jim McIntyre and Jim McIntyre was just fantastic. I'd known Jim from playing against him. He's a very, very similar player to myself, I think, mm -hmm. in the forward area. He was super keen to come here, for me to come here, and obviously I'm a fight, I'm a fight boy as well, so it made it a quite easy decision and then it didn't take me long to decide, to be honest. Because mm -hmm. you had gone from Ross County to... That's right, yeah. So when I'd left Dun Dundee, the Benettis had came in and obviously done fantastic things for Dundee bringing in all those players but that meant the younger guys wouldn't really get much of a look in so I took that opportunity um, I spoke to Neil Cooper who was the manager um, God rest his soul um, and uh, him and Danny McDonald who I initially met when I went up to Dingwall were keen to take me there so I signed there to, to start with played a couple of seasons there and then John Robertson at Inverness um, came in and signed me on a, on a Bosman deal and so it's the uh, probably the luckiest and best move I've made because I was kind of signed as a uh, Division 1 player as it was at the time now the Championship um, because they were I think they were 9 points behind Clyde with not very long left in the season to go and then obviously Inverness managed to eventually catch them uh, and get promoted to the Premier League and then I had 4 seasons in the Premier League which were just absolutely amazing great place to have, great place to play football mm -hmm. yeah. So um, so what was the attraction of them for then? Being local yeah. for one um, my daughter had just been born, we were obviously quite far away from family as well, so family definitely played a massive part in it, wanted to be closer closer to family. The time was right football wise for me to try and seek, I was thinking I was 27 or 28 year old, so I wanted to sustain my chance of being a first team player at a high level at a big club as much as I could, so um, I, that was the main reason for, for it and it kind of all just tied in nicely, the, the location, a local team for me. Um, the family and career-wise, it just kind of all lined up at the right mm -hmm. time. So, because yeah. at that time, obviously when Jim McIntyre took over, he was obviously a player here. Yep. Um, took over as manager and then finished that season. Um, so was seven oh eight, and then eight oh nine was his first full season as manager. Yeah. So um, he was obviously had the players that had been here that he'd been playing with before. Yeah. Um, so he had a nucleus of a team and then he was obviously wanting to bring in some, yep. more, some players of his own. So you obviously fitted um, quite well into yeah, that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> he, was, he was, when I spoke to him, he, 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 was, he was super keen and his passion for him to get here. And even see him in interviews now um, when he's doing it at Dundee, he's still the same. He's mm. still that passionate about it. He's still, um, if he gets that the idea in his head, he goes for it. He's quite focused in, in that way. Um, with regards to him taking over, it must have been hard for him at the time, obviously going from being the player to taking over. Quite big names mm. at that time, there were really talented squads which made me want to come to Dunfermline as well because mm. we knew we should have been up near <coughs> the top of the league. It didn't happen that first season, although we had some fantastic results, the consistency wasn't there. We did manage to get to the semi-final of the Scottish Cup that season. Um, yeah, but that must have been quite quite tricky for him going from being their, uh, their, play, their player and their mate to trying to be their manager and it was a sort of transitional period for Dunfermline as well, they were making a lot of cuts um, money wise so he was um, had that to juggle with as well as trying to keep the squad happy and a, a lot of older boys as, mm -hmm. as well, he tried to kind of juggle that but it was a super talented uh, yeah. team I was coming into and I knew that. Because mm -hmm. so. 
Um, I mean, we had the likes of Scott Wilson, Scott Thompson, Carl yeah. Moose was there. Yeah. Shields there. Gal was in goal. Yeah, and then um, there you go. There, that's just. It's Kevin Harper was here. Stephen Absolutely. Glass was here. Mm -hmm. All like, international players, you know, really talented yeah. footballers. Um, yeah, it, and it was. And I remember our, our first um, kind of big stepping stone win was that three 0 one up at St Johnson. I thought they're the team that's going to be up near the mm -hmm. top of league. We've just hammered them comfortably. So I think, oh, this is going to mm -hmm. be really good. But it was just so inconsistent for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the squad was really different. I think it was. Yeah, good memory. See, he'd be better than me at this. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Because you had gone, um, I remember like you got to Austria in pre-season. That's right. Yeah. So That's right. that was a bit of an experience. As uh, well. That was uh, again. Uh, Hannah had just been born, my youngest daughter, and we had, like I say, uh, dragged out for ages for me. The car was like, oh, come on, come on, this will go, this will go, and then. Um, as soon as I came down, I had signed, and I think the next day I had to move from the house to the family with the baby down to my mum and dad's house into the house. The next day I went away to Austria. I was like, I said, sorry, I'm away pre season training for a week. It was just, it was ridiculous. Mm. But uh, what a fantastic place that was as well. It was yeah. just great. And you no, know, it, it kind of made it easier for me as well. I only knew Alec Burke really when I, when I signed initially. So, it's nice to have a familiar face mm -hmm. in, in the squad, but I, I never really knew any of the other boys, mm -hmm. bar from playing against a few of them. So mm -hmm. being away and then in that environment, kind of in each other's pockets for a length of time, it made it so easy. And the guys, mm -hmm. the guys were yeah. great. And it made was it, it simple. good then to jail as a squad great. then? With fantastic. The new guys coming yeah, in. really, it was. It was great. Mm -hmm. Fantastic guys, and yeah, it made it simple. Yeah. It was good. Um, you were obviously signed as a striker, but. You weren't a prolific scorer, but you brought a lot of people into play. Yeah, I never was th throughout my career, and obviously it was always something I was looking to improve upon, but that's maybe not where my, my strengths lay. And again, speaking to Jim when I first met him, he knew that, and he's like, this is what I'm expecting you to do, and I was like, well, that's kind of what, <laughs> what I did, so that, that's great. And I never put, ever put any extra pressure on myself because... And the teams that I had been playing with, it was normally my strike partner from a, a, a younger age. It tended to be the goal scoring sort of half, if you like, of the, of the partnership. Yet, when strikers maybe did come out of form or when goal scor scorers stopped scoring goals, it tended to be them that was getting left out of the team. I remember Andy Kirk when he signed here, one of the best goal scorers I've ever played with. Myself and Andy played really well together, good foil, foil for each other. But if Andy wasn't scoring, he would find himself out of the team. And even though I hadn't been scoring as well, I would tend to be the one that was left in and, and, and juggled about. So I knew what my role was as part of the team and I was more than happy to, to do whatever it was for a team and be more unsung if you like. That didn't bother me at all as long as we were, the team was doing okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you say that, Andy, the, the link-up was, was quite well. The partnership was really good because, as you say, Andy Kirk did score a lot of goals for him. He did. And Andy again made it so easy for me because what I was good at, he was he was good at reading. So um, I kind of made us both look that a little bit better. But the other player on the team, I remember it maybe more surprisingly, had such a natural link with was Nicky Finn that mm -hmm. season, and he just seemed to be there where I wanted to give him the ball, or he would be making the run to where he wanted to go because he knew that's where I would put it. I don't know. It's hard to put your finger on something like that, but we really mm -hmm. seemed to. Kind of hit it off, and if I remember rightly, Nicky had probably one of his most successful seasons as well as myself being quite consistent performance wise. Nicky looked like he was really going to step onto the, the mm. next stage with the sort of amount of goals he was scoring and stuff. Yeah, because he was playing in midfield and he, would, right. come, he would be like the attacking midfield, yep. so he would come in late and yep. obviously the ball was, would be in the box. Yeah, so or flicking it on or laying it yeah. off for him. So, yeah, no, it, it was. And I just, I know eventually once I came back after the bad injury, I came back into the the squad for the and I eventually was in the squad that um, ended up getting promoted, which was our aim in the end. I was just disappointed that it never maybe happened quicker with the sort of talent that we yeah. had in that team. Because mm -hmm. that, that first season we did quite well, and as you said, we um, ended up going to the semi final of the Scottish Cup. But um, And you had scored in most of the games running up, you know, and all the rounds coming up, because you scored against Clyde, you scored against Airdrie. Um, and 
And the Aberdeen game here was a, was a draw, and it was Nicky Finn that scored. That's right, yeah. Um, I think it was from, was it from your shot. That was and then he put in, I can't see, I have to admit, that game's a bit I hazy for Andy, me. But Andy Kirk, I think, got an end of it. And Nick ended up putting it in. The game's a bit hazy, but I actually came off. <laughs> I had bit through my tongue in the first half and had to get a stitch in my tongue at half time. I was I split my tongue, then went out in the second half. I think it was, what was the guy's name? Right, I think it was. It played for Aberdeen at that time. I challenged him in the box and he yelled me in the eye and I cut my eye. I've still got this scar on. There's only scar I've got from playing football, surprisingly. Yeah, so I had to come off. So I had a stitched tongue, a stitched eye. So I actually missed the next couple of games after that mm -hmm. and then managed to just get myself back in time for, for the replay oh, up yeah. at Pataudry, which mm -hmm. one of the best feelings of my, my football mm -hmm. career when that penalty went in. Yeah, because you scored the winning penalty. So yeah. I bet it was a... Uh, it seemed to me that game was a, oh, I don't know if we were watching it, it was maybe a tense game because it was really tight. Yeah. Yeah. And went in extra time yeah. and we're all thinking, oh, you know, we're going to manage this. Yeah. You know? We were shattered. I remember us mm. being dead on our feet, the whole team. I remember looking at Nipper and that, thinking he's 36, 37 year old, and nothing. But he was outstanding that night. I um, right. think it, it finished 0 0. Managed to get the penalties, and then um, Paul Gallagher saved a couple. And they said, when we were standing, and said, Gal will save at least one of these and mm -hmm. he had and then it happened to come I think I was the fourth penalty mm -hmm. and he had saved two so it was a quite a nice situation to be in I knew if I'd scored then we were yeah. through but also had the back up of somebody <laughs> else if I never but uh, no it's one of the best oh, feelings I've ever won that penalty at the back were you, of the net. Were you confident of taking penalties? No what not really I was never really a penalty taker at, at boys club my dad's standing there he made me penalty taker for a boys club and I actually had no bad record there but uh, once I stepped up, I wasn't really a set piece or a person, mm -hmm. but when the manager was looking that night for, for players um, to step up, I was probably slightly fresher than some of the other guys, if you like, and I said, I'm more than happy to take one, put me whatever number yeah. you want, so it was Jerry McCabe that was taking um, taking the list that night, and as soon as I came over, I said, right, you're taking one, so <laughs> aye, good, it's good for him. <laughs> um, what, were, what was it like then, playing underneath... Um, Jim McIntyre and Jerry McCabe as, as his assistant. What, what were they like um, to play for? They were very thorough. Training was excellent. Always at super high tempo. Um, Jerry McCabe was more of um, I want to say a relaxed character, more of a jovial character because he wasn't really relaxed. He got quite riled up in games. He's so passionate about football, mm -hmm. and it came across. And you sort of you, you fed off that as well, and the sort of desire that that um, Jim McIntyre had it always sort of drove you on, you know how much mm -hmm. he was he was wanting it as well. So you, you always you, you rub off stuff that your manager and your coaches are telling you. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry always knew the right thing to say at the right time, whether it needed to be an arm around the shoulder or whether it needed to be a rocket or um, whether it needed to be more jovial. He was really clever in, mm -hmm. in that sort of way. Mm -hmm. I bet that's the first time he's ever been described as clever in his life. <laughs> he, was he, was very, right. he was a very he good was, player in his yeah, life. So, he was an yeah. excellent player. Mm -hmm. Um, um, just a fantastic, just a, it really was a massive highlight of my, my career coming here and um, if it wasn't for the injury I think it could have been a, a lot know, longer as I well. Know. It came down to it at the end that <coughs> after I came back and we, um, I played those couple of games and we ended up getting promoted and you were going to the Premier I was so excited and Jim had said look I think I'd been out for about 14 months with the injury, um, the worst time of my career by a long stretch and then he said, come back to pre-season, we'll get in our contract, not a problem. Bearing in mind, I hadn't been paid, mm -hmm. I'd been out of contract for about nine months. But coming back for a, for a couple of games, I'd signed till the end of the season here. He said, come back to pre-season, you're fit, there's no worries. I had been, went to Dundee when they were having that um, uh, period with the couldn't sign players mm -hmm. and they could only play players mm -hmm. with trialists because I was out of contract I had went and played a couple of games for them before then Dunfermline came back and said like you look fit enough come back and play for us so Barry Smith came on the phone and said look I'm keen to sign you here for next season I've got a contract on the table for you um, and so I phoned Jim I told him look I am not trying to bargain you off against that he knew what I was like I'm not trying to bargain anybody off against anyone this is the situation I've been offered a contract with no sort of thing he said I totally understand that that's um, a hard decision. I'm gutted, but you've got to, you've got to mm -hmm. do that. Because he was in the situation where he couldn't, because he'd been helping me so much, and because I'd been injured for that length of time, he'd been getting um, pressure. He can't really sign a, 
an injured player, if you like, mm. after already playing pain for him for however many months mm. it was. So it was it was difficult, really difficult, and I knew we were going to Premier League, and I was fairly confident that the injury was away, but it's always niggling in the back of your mind. What if it's what if it's not? I need to mm. have a job, same as everybody else, to pay mm. to pay for the bills. So yeah, and then going back to Dundee, it's the first club I had been at as well, so I was familiar with them, which made that easier for me too. And I played with Barry Smith, but devastated that I didn't get another crack at the, the Premier League. And as it turned out, if I had hung on, I would have been absolutely, would have been absolutely fine. But uh -huh. fine, a fine thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Um, going back about Dundee, when after that Aberdeen game, um, we obviously went into the semi-final of the Scottish Cup, and um, played our, one of our rivals, Falk Cup. Didn't do too well. Worst up there with, I probably put it on a par with the, the day we lost the um, quarter-final cup with Inverness against Celtic. We were 1-0 up with three minutes to go and we got beat 2-1. That, along with that semi-final day, mm -hmm. is the worst I have ever felt after a game of football in my whole career. It was awful. We just knew we hadn't played well. We knew Falkirk were there for the taking. I think they were bottom of the Premier League when they played them. Playing with very little confidence, which came across that day, and it just did not go well mm. for us at all that day. And it mm. was hor horrible because you don't get that sort of opportunity no. ever really no. in football. And for it, the game, the semi final to be at hand, and, and know you were so close playing against a team that you're probably every bit as good as in the semi final at Scottish Cup, and to not make it was just. Uh, awful. It was yeah, it was a game that we, we didn't seem to never play really got goal. going. No, no. Never really got going. Um, it's the only I think I'd, I'd never say the, ma the manager made the wrong decision or stuff. He makes the decision for what he is. But I, I think if he'd started with Andy Kirk up front with me that day and kind of had to be honest, we tried to go attacking with a formation we maybe weren't too familiar with. Four two three one. Which, we played, but because we just never really got it going, it kind of went against against us. And if we had had Andy on the park that day, he was liable to sort of nick a team against a team that wasn't particularly strong mm -hmm. at that time, if you like, then yeah, it might have made that wee bit difference. Yeah. But Again. That's decisions that are made at the time, yeah. Of course it is. So, of course yeah. it is. But yeah, just awful feeling. Mm -hmm. Awful. We finished up in the league last season. So. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I know so, for all they say oh, it was a real a real really poor season, we really pushed on to mm -hmm. to get a, a good a good league finish. And I mean mm -hmm. um I believe that team should have won the league. I think St Johnson ended up winning mm -hmm. it that season, didn't they? And we had comfortably beaten them, like I'd well, kinda of already mm -hmm. alluded to at the start and we knew we were as, as good as them, we just could not get the, the consistency going. Mm -hmm. But um yeah. Just, yeah. Third still um, wasn't good enough to be honest for that uh, team. No, but um, but then the next season, um, and obviously changes had been made in the team because the more experienced players had had left. Yep. I mean, um, so the the lost that experience, mm -hmm. but then Jim brought in a lot more, you know, of players that he wanted and mm -hmm. whatever and new players. So mm -hmm. again, it was a a different type of squad. Mm -hmm. And you started off quite well, yep. and then, as you say, you got your injury. Yeah. So it must have been a bit devastating because it was an injury that you got that seemed to drag on for a wee while before you actually found out what it was. Yeah, um, it's it was a plantar fascia injury, and it's quite a common injury to um, a lot. Of, a lot of people just suffer from that from wearing the wrong shoes, which seems mm. ridiculous. But um, I remember it was down the Astro were training at Dalgetty Bay, and I jumped up for this ball, and it's a stretching of the tendon in the foot, and it was agony, it's like glass in the bottom of your foot. Mm. And then um, with plantar fasciitis, there's different sort of ways, ways you can treat it, there's different procedures, so you sort of go through. The list of things before you find out maybe how severe it is like so you, you can try this let's let's try this let's try this let's try this and all of them never worked so it wasn't if we never knew what it was it's just that all the things we tried leading up to the most extreme situation is actually getting your tendon cut in your mm -hmm. foot which ended up happening 
happening to me. But mm -hmm. I had expensive shockwave therapy and everything, and the, and the bottom of my foot was quite painful. And the club were great; they were absolutely brilliant. Jerry Docker at the time, best physio I've ever had. Still is, still in touch with him. Still put some of the amateur players that I, I coach with now up to Jerry because he's great. But um, it was just one of these things, and yeah, I think it ended up being about thirteen months before, mm -hmm. and it was. And then, like you saying, it was a, an exciting time bringing in those teams, mm -hmm. and that's the squad or the basis of the squad that would obviously go on and eventually win the team like David mm -hmm. Graham and Stephen McDougall, Joe Cardell, mm -hmm. and like you say, players that had played the Stephen McDougall and Joe Cardell, especially when we played against them and when they were at Airdrie, mm -hmm. they were standouts when we played them, so obviously that's why Jim signed them, knew they were talented players. Um, and yeah, it's, it was, it's, the timing was awful. Yeah. Um, getting closer to thirty as well, it got kind of, mm -hmm. and I'd never been one. I think I think previous to that, the longest I'd ever been out was about four weeks with an ankle injury. So I'd never been one for being um, injured. That one just, I yeah. mm. ultimately did. I, although I got back into full time football, I did kind of end my my stint in full full time mm. football. Yeah. So. But as you say, when you came back um, towards the end of. Um, 2010, I want to say, when we actually won the league. You played out there in the game, the Wraith Rovers. Wraith Rovers, that's right. Yeah. I came um. on just, but I think we were getting beat 1 nothing at the time. Um, and obviously, famously, Martin Hardy's popped in that absolute wonder goal. It was great to be on the pitch for that. Mm. And Fife Derby's just great. And the one fantastic to play in. Um, I remember the one that. Starts Park, where we were one 0 down as well, and we ended up scoring. Uh, uh, David Graham scored in the last minute. We ended up winning two one, and the atmosphere when we were over in the crowd that day, scoring in the last minute, was just the hairs on the back of the neck. Mm -hmm. So their games were always great to play, in, but Hearts was uh, obviously amazing mm -hmm. when he when he came here and do what he done on that day, and especially the fact that it's against Ray Rovers was just um, mm -hmm. aye, a bit extra special. Ultimately, and you winning the league, doesn't that? So. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah. and then you were through at Morton as well. That's right. Yeah. It was it 2 or 3 nothing that day, I think mm -hmm. we won, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the changing room that day was just after the game. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really did. Had you ever won the league before? No. The Dundee, when I was really young, I'd been part of the first team yeah. squad. I was only 17, but uh, the manager at the time, John McCormack, made sure the young lads that had been in and around the first team kind of got that experience to know what it mm -hmm. felt like and it was I remember going down to City Hall and everything and being up on the balcony with the trophy and all that yeah. sort of jazz so yeah it's aye it's you don't like I say you don't get those sort of no. feelings very often so no. aye it's good yeah. it's good is there any other you're talking about the Derby's there any other game that springs to mind that for the wrong reason the yeah. semi-final obviously mm -hmm. The other ones, the obvious ones, the St Johnson game, I think that's the best we've probably played mm -hmm. for a 90-minute spell when we won 3 nothing. and I really thought oh, we've got a right chance of winning the league here. We've mm -hmm. really been quite comfortable with them. Um, and the other one is the semi-final game against Aberdeen. I think, I can't remember, the first game was live on the telly, possibly might even been, but the second game certainly was, and we all knew it was going to so we always look forward to mm -hmm. live game, live night games on the, on the TV, up in Pataudry, yeah. team above in the league, and... So it went on penalties, quite an exciting way to win. Nerve wracking for us, but quite an exciting way to win. And again, running over to the, the crowd and the fans every day, just going berserk. Just yeah. that, it's great, it's a fantastic feeling. You can never replace that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, considering the clubs you've played for, you know, like Dundee, Inverness, Ross County, and Dunfermline, what are your thoughts on the time here at Dunfermline? Great, I feel at home. Um, so, close, so close to family, born in Kirkcaldy. Um, just, I don't know, you always, even even still now, I look out for all the five. I don't know why, why I do that. I just I always, um, I was a hip supporter. I blame my dad for that one for, for my life. Uh, but always look out for the five. Five mm -hmm. teams um, results. These five race over them. Yeah. Just can be. I don't. I don't know why that is. You just mm -hmm. feel closer. I suppose playing boys club, um, in the boys club uh, leagues for Leedbank Violet. You're playing against all those teams that are sort of in that area in your league, and you hear mm -hmm. about the boys are there away to sign for such and such. They're away to sign for such and such. So you're kind of always looking out for them. Uh -huh. But uh, I, it, 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 it felt comfortable. Um, just wish we could have. Uh, 
won the league quicker. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, what, when you finished your career playing football, you went on to be a fireman as well? Mm -hmm. Still a firefighter now. Mm -hmm. Fant fantastic job. Quite an easy integra integration between mm -hmm. the two, surprisingly. It's sort really? of very team ethic, um, very dressing room banterish, <laughs> should we say. <laughs> um, I, it's, it's great, and I love working as part of a team, and I knew I'd find that quite easy obviously a lot to learn, a lot of different things to learn, a lot of different things to learn but um, it's been fantastic, I'm working up in Perth Fire Station now and a fantastic work, my first works were fantastic, look after you, you feel like you're the apprentice again <laughs> after after going from football to being sort of the old head or whatever and younger players come and asking you then you're right back to square one again but um, mm -hmm. I, I, found it, I found it okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I made that decision, I suppose the injury gives you a wake up call. I made that decision while I was at Dundee, I said look I need to get something at the back of me um, just in case something like that happened again and it was spooky the way that it turned out. I finished that season with Dundee, unfortunately I had a couple of injury issues um, at Dundee when I was there, I couldn't really get a run in the team. Um, so I knew it was coming and I finished the start of May, I think it was about May the 6th, I finished at Dundee, my contract was up and I started with the fire beginning on the 7th, it was just unbelievable really? the other time, it was scary, so mm -hmm. um, maybe could have went on, tried to, to, to do it for a, a, another couple of years, um, I decided that was the, the time to sort of make that decision, I need to look after the, the family mm -hmm. for the future come after that because football doesn't last forever and um, ended up um, speaking to my brilliant watch manager at the time said so like I've been approached to be uh, asked to play part time cause, um, with our both and after thinking I was finished then I managed to <laughs> I said you can never give it up <laughs> never give it up so when the offer came and they were, they were great and they were, uh, the boys at the station were fantastic and they swap shifts for Saturdays and mm -hmm. they will play match day and great to be back involved and yeah, managed to drag it out for a <laughs> couple of years Christine and then our broth and then assistant player at Elgin for a bit as well so uh -huh. aye fantastic and I coach with the village amateur team and I'm more than happy that gives me my football fix right. now so that's okay. fine. <laughs> uh, so do you enjoy the coaching side? It's great, it's fantastic, it's a lot less tiring, it's easier shouting than it is running now. <laughs> so aye, yeah it's great. Mm -hmm. well, well, it's been a lovely speaking to you, Graham, and it's no, been nice seeing you. It's great to so, back, um, Christine. Nice to see you too. Yeah, I hope, I hope we can change the fortunes as well. That'll be good. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. Cheers. Thank you.